Obsidian Sync and Obsidian Publish are two add-on services, paid add-on services for the Obsidian application, which you can see up here. Now, there are different prices, they may change into the future, but this is what they are currently as of the time I'm making this video. Obsidian Publish is the more expensive of the two, and what this allows you to do is publish your Obsidian Note, your Obsidian Vault, which is locally stored. It allows you to publish it live so people can see exactly what's going on, which I'll go through how to do in a second. And then Obsidian Sync allows you to sync between different devices, and this is probably more applicable to most people using Obsidian because it allows you to sync your notes across devices like your phone, iPad, tablet, laptop, PC, etc. I'm using both of these add-on services, so I want to explain the differences between the two and how you can actually use them. So going through Publish first, Obsidian Publish first, if I go into my settings, you can see Core Plugins, and I'm going to scroll all the way down. I've activated Publish and Sync. So if I tick that off and I come out, you can see this little published sign has gone. If I go back into my settings, push the publish button on. Now I have the publish changes button at the side of my screen here. Now when I push on the publish changes, it brings up a menu and shows me all the different changes. Now this only comes up if you have access to the internet, otherwise it'll say failed access. Now this has actually gone into my publish, so if I go backwards just a little bit and switch site, you can see I'm using one out of one site. So when you buy and you purchase the add-on Obsidian Publish, you buy essentially one site. And this is what my site's called, Danny Hatcher, because that's my name. I can then buy another site if I want, but that would then add on more cost. I'm going to choose this site because that's the only one I've got. And here you can see we've got three toggleable menus. Now this one is always toggled open for me and whenever I make a change it will appear. I will go through some examples later on. Then we have unchanged, so that's basically everything I have currently public on my Obsidian Publish, and then I have new. And new are things that haven't been published on my site, maybe because I don't want them to, or I have just added them. I can select them all, so that's 154, and I can deselect them all, and you can select them from here. When I open up these toggles, it basically opens up my file explorer, so you can see I've got these notes which haven't been filed. You can see they're over here, they're unfiled. Then we have the folders, which we can toggle shut, and then we can select the notes that we want to add in. If I untoggle my unchanged section, and type in collection it is now going to filter for notes with collection in so you can see i've got a useful note collection building a note collection the featured requirements for a useful note collection they are three working notes i have you can see there's the folder there's the other folder and then i have danny's note collection which is my main note i can then change the site options I can add a site name, which is just my name. I have my homepage file, which is my Danny's note collection. That's the note that will automatically open whenever anyone goes onto my Obsidian Publish. I have a logo, which is actually a profile picture of me, which is an image file that I've put into my Obsidian Vault that is currently in my image folder, capture folder, notes folder. I can add a custom domain, which I personally don't because I have my own website. So what I do is I put a link to my Obsidian Vault on my website if people want to go to my notes I can disallow search engine indexing, which is very similar to a Notion public page. You can either have it indexed on search or not. In this case, I do want it indexed in search so people can search for it if it comes up, but I'm not banking on that. It's just an option there. Themes, well, my theme is a light-based theme, so I have a light theme, but you can switch to dark. Show Hover Preview is basically the page preview core plugin that you can use. You can either activate it or deactivate it. I use it, so I activate it. Readable line length is the same as the settings for your normal obsidian, and I don't have long lines, so I tick that one on. Trick line breaks, again, is the same as the settings inside your normal obsidian. Now, I don't have it on in my obsidian, so I don't have it on in my publish. Use sliding windows. Now, I don't use the sliding windows community plugin in my obsidian when I'm working because I don't actually like it when I'm working, but I use it in my publish because when you're going through different pages, it's easier to go through the different panes and different pages that you've opened, so you can go back kind of like a breadcrumb, but when I'm working, I drag pages around, so it doesn't quite work for me. Visual components, show navigation, that's basically showing the file explorer. The search bar, which is just allowing people to search through your notes as you would expect. Show the graph view, so they can see the graph view, and it allows you to expand the graph view. Show table of contents, very obvious, it shows the table of contents, i.e. the headers that are in the page. Show backlinks, which actually show the backlinks instead of on the right side, at the bottom of the page, so anyone viewing your publish can see all the notes that you have backlinked to that note. And then you can add passwords and Google Analytics, but I want my notes to be free online so I don't add any passwords and I'm not that fast about who looks at them and who doesn't, so no Google Analytics for me. What I'm now going to do is make a couple of changes to show you how it works. So I've added a text line in my journal page, so today's journal page. I have also added a new page called New Page. And my paper template page, I'm actually going to move it from my templates folder 
to my journal folder. Now when I click to publish changes, so you can see this change toggle is open. I've deleted the paper template because I've deleted it from the templates folder and added it new to my journal folder. I have changed this page in the journal folder. And then if we open up new, you can see there's the new page that we created. So I can click on there and add that in. And if we scroll down, you can see at the bottom of the journal folder, we have paper template. Now that's because it's new because I've moved it from template folder to journal folder. And you can see I actually have some folders that I don't publish because I don't want to publish the PDFs. I don't want to publish all of my journal folder because audio journals, I don't want to have them public and I don't want to have some of my hidden pages public either. Once I've selected all the things that I actually want to change, I can then click publish. It will then go through and upload those changes and then give you a link to the site. Now, if I go back, there is also a link to the site right here. So you can click on that and go directly to your Obsidian Publish. So here is my Obsidian Publish. Now, I don't actually have my custom theme on Publish. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But you can see we've got the new page. That is the new page that I've made. It is completely empty. There is nothing in there. I then have this. This is my note collection. This is the main home page that I set in the settings. And we, if we scroll down, you can see we've got the copy link to any of the headings. We can scroll down. And if I click on this page, because at the moment we're a new page, we click on this page. There's the table of content. There's the graph view. I can click expand and there is the expanded graph view. Again, I can navigate through the graph view to the pages like we would in Obsidian. I have the backlinks page here, which goes through all of these things for all of this page. Colon is not a page, but this is the page preview setting that I set up in publish we have the file explorer down here opening up exactly where you are so new page it's going to close if i close down all of these new pages there if i click on this page it's going to open up in the file explorer exactly where it is so this is actually a working note which is why the working folder has opened if i then click through here it's then going to take me back to this original page and again i can bounce around this going where i want clicking on what i want if we come into this page you can see this is the footnote so footnotes still appear as they would in Obsidian as you do normally. You can see there is the PDF that I haven't published. I have it in my system, but I haven't published it, which is why it doesn't show this available. I personally publish my journal. So if I go on today's journal, you can see all of the things that I've consumed today. This is my weekly review. So if I click there, there's the weekly review and people can go backwards and forwards in all of the notes that I've taken. If I come back to here, you can see, oh, what is this? This is a podcast I consumed earlier today, actually, but I've just shared it on publish. And this is, this is my capture note. And these are all the things that it is linked to so the goals this is a processing note and people can navigate around my obsidian notes in my obsidian publish if i have them published just like this now i've come back to my main obsidian vault i'm actually going to move this paper back to the folder it's supposed to be in i'm also going to delete the new page because i don't want this page and i'm going to delete the comment because again i don't want the comment click on publish changes select the changes i want to push to publish so i've got rid of the line in my journal page i've got rid of this page so this has been changed this has been deleted and that file that I actually moved, I didn't push to publish. So now I've got rid of that change. It's just got rid of it from the change log because it didn't get changed anyway. And now I'm going to push publish. They're all done, click done, and I'm all sorted. To add my custom theme to Obsidian Publish, I'm going to go into my note collection. That's the name of my Obsidian Vault. Go into my .obsidian folder, go into my themes, copy my theme. So I'm going to copy the theme, control C, go into my main vault and paste it. Now I'm going to rename this file publish. Once I've renamed the file, I can then go back into my Obsidian Vault. Now I have the CSS publish file here. I can go into publish changes, go into my new tab, click on publish CSS. So that's the change I want to make publish that. Now when I go to my Obsidian Publish, it should change. Now if it doesn't change, like it hasn't done in this scenario, you actually need to clear out your cache history. So your browser cache history, and then it will update what's going on. That also applies to making small changes to your Obsidian Vault. So you can see we've still got new page down here, but I don't actually want that in there. So what I'm going to do is clear my cache. I'm in Chrome, so I've gone to the three dot menu at the top right, gone more tools, go down to clear browsing data, or you could use the shortcut control shift delete. I'm going to clear the data for the last hour. And now you can see we've got my orange theme, which is in here. You've got the blue highlights. So now it's my theme that's been activated and it's got rid of that new page and all the other changes we've made has now been updated. Obsidian Sync works in a very similar way. So if I go back into my settings, go all the way down to the bottom of core plugins, activate sync, the settings then come up in the plugin options. So if I look to the left side, we can go all the way down and click on sync. So now I need to choose the vault. Now you can have five sync vaults as of the time of making this video and I currently have two. 
So I have my main sync vault, which is what I use on my phone, tablet, iPad, laptop, and PC, and that was created three months ago. And then my sister has a sync vault as well that she uses on her phone and her PC. Each sync vault can have its own unique password, but do not forget the password because they can't recover it. So you'd have to make a new vault, which means one account can have five sync vaults. So my sister is logged into my Obsidian account, but her sync vault. Inside the settings, you can have a look at the sync status from here. You can also see it elsewhere, which I'll show you in a second. You have the device name. So when you're looking through the sync log, you can actually work out what device is being synced where, whether it was a laptop, a phone, desktop, etc. Deleted files, sync activity, you can view it there, or you can view it in the other option, which I'll show you in a second. You can select certain folders that you don't want to sync, very similar to the publish menu. You can go through and say, don't sync this folder across devices for whatever reason. You can then toggle whether you sync audio, videos, PDFs, and sync all the other different types of media. I have all of that toggled on. And then you have the main settings, appearance settings, and all these other different settings, which I have set on, except from the last two, because community plugins, sometimes I add community plugins to my PC, but I don't want them on my laptop or on my phone, because maybe they don't work on my laptop or my phone, or I'm just testing them out. So I don't want to sync those across just in case. That's my personal preference. So as I'm looking at my main screen, you can see down here, we've got this green tick. Now this is saying it's fully synced. If I click on that tick, it comes up with the sync log and you can see everything that's going on and it is fully synced. I click done. Now when I come into this page, so if I go into my daily journal and add a comment, you see now in the bottom right, it's orange. So it's indexing, it's syncing. If I click into here, you can say it's trying to figure out what's going on and then it will upload the changes. There they are. So this is the desktop. This is the ID. So I know, okay, this was an upload change. This is what happened. This desktop basically created the change in this page. Now it's fully synced. We're all good to go. Now, the more changes you make, the longer it will take to sync. So if you make a hundred changes on your PC without logging on to your phone, your laptop, the other device, and then try and upload and sync that all at once, it's going to do a hundred changes at once. So I actually go on my phone every day, so I don't have that many uploads. But some days when I'm working heavily in my notes on my PC, I may have done two, three hundred changes. When I go onto my phone, it's got to do those two, three hundred sync changes when I open up my phone, which can take a little bit of time. But at the end of the day, it's like 20, 30 seconds. It's not really that much. I've just gone over to my phone, so I haven't actually synced anything yet. I've just started recording on my phone. I'm going to push open Obsidian, and you're going to see this live. I'm not going to cut anything out. This is exactly what's going on. It's loading the plugin, loading the vault. It's got a, a couple of bars going across. This is basically loading and syncing what's going on. Now, when it opens up, it's actually going to show the, the sync on the side menu. So if I swipe left, you can see, oh, it's already synced. Wow, that was quick. Um, But you can see the green tick. Uh, at the top right, that's actually telling me that it's all synced up. Uh, now, because it's already synced, I can't really show you the sync log. Well, I can actually show you the sync log. So if I drag uh, this over and I click on the tick, so my thumb has just pushed the tick, you can see connecting to server fully synced. So that change was essentially instantaneous. Uh, but if I was to get rid of this, what this is now going to do is send a message to, so my phone is synced, but it's going to send that message over to my computer, and then my computer won't have that comment on there. If I actually, while I'm here I'm going to do a, a quick live change so I'm on my PC you can't see it on my PC but I'm going to type hello you can see it <laughs> you can hear it on my uh, keyboard and you can see there it is it's it's sing it's thinking about it it's thinking about it there we go and it's synced so the Obsidian Sync screen capture you just saw from my phone is actually kind of like the worst case scenario. It had all the updates to do. It's got my whole vault to open and I don't actually have my vault open on my phone in the morning. So that's the slowest it's ever going to be. Most of the time I have it loaded on my phone. So it's just, I open it up just as quick as a normal notes page. Now I could use Obsidian Publish on my phone as well, but most of the time when I'm using Publish and actually updating things, it's on my PC. So even though I could activate the plugin for Publish on my phone, I choose not to. Now I do sync video files. So screen recording, the screen recording you saw, I synced through my Obsidian Vault. And I showed an example of how to do that in a previous video about how to use Obsidian. So feel free to have a look at that. It goes through almost every other aspect of Obsidian. But that's it for me. So until the next time, get off YouTube and do something productive with your time instead.